Um, what is money? I just held it in my hand. What type of uh, good is that? It's it's an, it can be kind of, yeah, kind of be both depending on how you use it. It's, it'd be physical in the sense if you were to go to McDonald's and buy Food, but is it if you're talking if about you someone that's physical. wealthy, you say they have money, and you automatically know like you need more than like a twenty dollar bill. Like they have money, like, they have a is lot it, of money. Is a twenty dollar bill a physical good? A twenty dollar yes. bill is, but your income throughout the year you can't hold in your hand. You have to spend before you get it. And, right. You know, is how who who here is on my side and thinks that a twenty dollar bill is not a physical good? No. Based off of like gold, isn't it? It's not even no, it hasn't gold. been based off of gold. <laughs> That's my point, though. It's not even anything. It's piece of well, it's well, well before I can. You know how it's a physical good? If you throw it into your fireplace and you light it on fire, you get warmth off. <laughs> That's the only way it's a physical good. Even a dollar bill that you can hold in your hand is not a tangible uh, good. It's a theoretical concept. Um, money is not phys a physical good. Finances, that sort of thing is not a physical good. And why is that important? Because when we're talking about power, you brought up power, we can talk about money power, buy stuff, and we can talk about physical power <coughs> to punch me in the stomach. Um, can money punch me in the stomach? No. no. No, but... I can pay a guy to punch you. Right. <laughs> but it's different. You see how it's different. So back to the lower class people. They have no money, which is not a tangible uh, good. They have no education, also an ideal good, which is not tangible. And they have no power, which is ideal or tangible? Power. Ideal. 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 What about shooting me in the face? Is that ideal? Depends on how it's right. tangible. Right. Physical power is tangible. Physical power is tangible. Uh, but you can use ideal power or ideal goods to do physical things. Right. And you can use physical things to get ideal goods. You can sell a gun for money. Right? It changes two ways. What other types of power are they? Are there? I might have put them in here. Uh, types of power. Here's some. Uh, physical. We talked about that one. Political, police, and military. Political power. What's political power? I. Let me see if somebody's super smart. What's political power with a small p? A small p. Uh, lowercase. Anyone want to venture a guess on that? Um, politics. When you when I say politics, what do you think of? Government. Mm -hmm. Government. Right. Exactly. So we'll call a capital P government politics. Uh, lowercase p is what other types of politics are there? There's politics in the department, right? If somebody doesn't like the way that I am running this class, or they don't like me, or they don't like white people, then they're not going to hire me on next semester. There's some type of politics behind that. So political power can be government power, or it can be just the way that people are operating their little world. Okay, so I want you to be aware of that, because when you, when you use these terms, now that you're all grown ups and when you're writing your papers, um, make sure that you know the difference between government power and political power, because uh, it's a lot different. Um, here's a, here's an, an example of political power in government. Um, political power <coughs> is when you have the House of Representatives controlled by whatever party they're controlled by. I don't know, federal, state, I lost track of that. Um, say they're uh, controlled by the Republicans, and they go to the Senate, and the Senate's 50-50. Well, in order to get the bill to pass, they have to convince 
one of one party to vote for the other party's bill. And they would do that by sort of concessions. They, they, they'd scratch your back, uh, I'll scratch your back, you'll scratch mine, I'll give you this. So political power is more like a, a dickering and dealing and a bartering thing. It's not governmental. See how that's different? So you can have politics in government, but politics is not necessarily mean government. So we've talked about physical, economic, educational. We've talked about ideal goods and ideal power versus tangible goods and tangible power. Police power. Um, what is police power uh, over you? Somebody give me an example or a definition. I think an example could be like to create to pull you over if you're breaking the law, or like they will discipline you for my in the right direction, maybe? Sure, yes, and I'm, uh, I'm glad you went that route, uh, and we'll, we got to keep talking about this. No so, law enforcement. So somebody's going to pull you over uh, for speeding. Um, what are they going to do after that? Discipline. Write you a ticket. They're going to write you a ticket, <laughs> and uh, because they're a jerk, what else are they going to do? Have your car towed. Have your car towed and search your car. And then what are they going to do because they found something under your seat? They smell kind of funny. What are they going to do? Take you to jail. And now you are where? In a bar jail. And your cell is six foot by six foot. So what type of power do they have over you? They've confined you, which is physical power. Okay? And they gave you a ticket, which is financial power, economic power, monetary power, whatever you want to call it. It's also an ideal power. So they've got physical, and they've got this monetary power, and we kind of talked about those, and there's another one that we're, that we're missing that we haven't talked about yet. So now... You, you've gone through all that, and you've spent a night in jail, and it sucked, and you paid your ticket, and it was terrible, and you're like, man, I hate police. And um, maybe you already do, I hate police, man. Um, so now, you're driving down the highway, and um, you've got an extensive drop, bad driving history, and you've been in jail before. Do you go the speed limit? You probably should. Yeah. You go the speed limit. Well, why do you, why would you go the speed limit? It's like a conscious power. Yeah, a conscious power. Conscious mental power of control. And they make you go the speed limit. So they can exercise physical power, the police can. They can give you a ticket for economic power over you. Um, and they can also control you so much that they can force you to go the speed limit if they have enough power over you. The police can. Okay? Couldn't they also, wouldn't it be a different kind of power saying that they could take away your license and they're kind of taking away like rights that you can, a way you can do things and stuff? Because if you get so many tickets, you could get your license taken away. Yes, that's a great idea. A, a, great, a great thing to talk about. They can take away your license, which she says is your right, whether it is or not. It's your right to be not really. So they take away your license, and that's your license is physical, but it's also ideal because it's your right, which I'm glad you brought up. And um, what happens when you get your license taken away? What's that? That sucks for you. It sucks for you. Why? You can't drive. You can't drive to where? Well, you can physically drive, but if you get caught driving without a license, that's an even bigger deal. Yeah, and then you're in jail more. <laughs> so, let's just, I don't want to go in depth on this too much, but I want you to, I want you to start thinking like this. Um, okay, so, I live in Flint, okay? Do people get pulled over in Flint? Not, not as much. You don't think so? Occasionally. I fly through Flint and I've never been pulled over. In the city, in the city. 
Uh, no, that's well. Cops are busy with other stuff. Well, if you would get pulled over hard because I need more money, but people have money. So. Let me ask you this then, I, and I want somebody to answer this. I'm thinking about how I would answer this when I was 18. Are you more likely to get pulled over in a Corvette or a beat up car that has a tail light out? Beat up. Beat up. Beat up car. It's more suspicious. More suspicious. For like well, if you're in Flint, <laughs> probably the vet. They get more well, no, they'd want to know why the hell if you live in Flint, you're driving with that. Okay, then let, let me rephrase that. Are you more likely to get pulled over in a 2010 Impala or an 86 Cutlass with a burnt out taillight? 86 Cutlass. With a burnt out taillight. So who's more likely to be controlled or oppressed? Lower the lower class. The lower class. And we already talked about what happens when you get pulled over. What, what do you, you start to lose your rights, your physical rights? They give you a ticket. So where, where's the trajectory there? It's a downward slope. Where if you have that 2010 Impala or whatever, they're not going to pull you over. You're not going to lose money. You're not going to lose your job. So you maintain that trajectory. Okay. So it's it's kind of strange how that works. Military power. So I want I want to plant that seed in your in your head. Military power. Uh, what is military power? And give me a definition or an example of it. Military. You guys know what it is, right? Our military. Okay. You can get like Oh, you totally skipped over the whole thing. <laughs> and you're right. Um, military power is, you know, the United States goes into uh, Afghanistan and blows them up or something like that. Because we have more guns, because we have more money, we have more bombs, we have more smart people that go to engineering skill, uh, school that can create the bombs, because we're like smarter with more money, with more guns. We have intelligence power and monetary power and physical power. Um, that's what people usually answer when I ask what is military power. <laughs> but, because you're so brilliant, um, the military also has power over who? Us. By, she said, the draft. So who do they draft? 18 and older guys. 18 and older guys, right. So the military has a lot of control over Afghanistan and also over American citizens, okay? So the draft, the military, they can draft us and what? Make us go fight, so that's what type of power? Physical. And they can also scare us to death that we're gonna get drafted when we're 18. And what type of power is that? Some type of mental conscious power. <coughs> ah. Who, who here is on my side and thinks that a $20 bill is not a physical good? No. It's based off of, like, gold, isn't it? It's not even no, it hasn't gold. been based off of gold in years. That's my point, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even any piece of gold. Well, before I can. You know how it's a physical good? If you throw it into your fireplace, um, what is money? I just held it in my hand. What type of uh, good is that? It can be kind of, yeah, kind of be both depending on how you use it. It's, it'd be physical in the sense if you were to go to McDonald's and buy you know, food, but... Is it? Finances, that sort of thing is not a physical good. And why is that important? Because when we're talking about power, you brought up power, we can talk about money power, buy stuff. And we can talk about physical power. So if you're talking about if you someone that's wealthy, you say they have money, and you automatically know, like, you mean more than like a twenty dollar bill. Like they have money, they have a is lot it, of money. Is a twenty dollar bill a physical good? A twenty dollar yes. bill is, but your income throughout the year you can't hold in your hand. You have to spend before you get it, and right. you know. Is, so you light it on fire and you get warmth off. <laughs> that's the only way it's a physical good. Even a dollar bill that you can hold in your hand is not a tangible uh, good. It's a theoretical concept. Um, money is not 
phys a physical good.